The Fourth Congress of Indonesian Diaspora, or CID4, has officially ended in Jakarta. The event aims to showcase Indonesians from across the globe, inspiring Indonesians to help build networks for collaborations and partnerships to tackle the most difficult development challenges. I'm Dean Benitez, and you're watching The Perspective. The CID4, or the 4th Congress of Indonesian Diaspora, saw thousands of Indonesians from across the globe. The event also featured a keynote speech by the 44th President of the United States, Barack Obama, uh, aside from other noteworthy speakers. Present with us uh, in the perspective today is one of the speakers, Sony Talonto, from Silicon Valley Asia Technology Alliance. Welcome to Jakarta Globe. Welcome again, if I may. Thank you. <laughs> Great to be here. It's so good to have you here. Um, could you share with us uh, some of the points that you highlighted, that you noted from the CID4 uh, event that just ended in Jakarta? Yep. Uh, great question. And actually, from my perspective, uh, as you said, this is the fourth Congress. Mm -hmm. And from what I've seen, this is probably the biggest, you know, and yeah. the most significant, you know, so far compared with the first one, second one, third one, and fourth one. And of course, you know, as you have mentioned as well, there's a very big speaker, you know, very big guest that we had, which is uh, President Obama. And from his perspective, he shared a lot about the importance of uh, having tolerance yeah. and also um, appreciating diversity and differences in people. And I thought that was a very good message and actually very fitting with what's going on around the world you mm -hmm. know, today, mm -hmm. given in the United States uh, and also in Indonesia. So I thought that was like the main message that really resonated well for me personally and based on what I've heard from other diaspora who were in the room mm -hmm. and even Indonesians, you know, because actually the 10,000 uh, uh, attendees were not just diaspora, but also Indonesians from Indonesia who were interested to learn more. They thought that was just amazing. You know, like the message of tolerance, very re relevant, amazing. Mm -hmm. And then in, in addition to President Obama's uh, speeches, there are many other different sessions, you know, yeah. uh, that featured uh, different diaspora from many countries. You know, actually I've heard uh, the attendees were like from 55 countries, you know, mm -hmm. 180 cities around the world. And so we had many different sessions that focused focus on different topics such as um, you know what are some of the risks and opportunities for Indonesia that was in my panel specifically but mm -hmm. there's there's a panel that talk about that with Busri Mulyani and others yeah. um, and then there's also a panel that is my panel actually focusing on innovation and disruption and technology mm -hmm. myself and there's another uh, fellow Silicon Valley Pak Sehat Sutarja you know from Marvel and then uh, a few kind of like the young up-and-coming uh, Indonesian entrepreneurs mm -hmm. you know from Bukalapak from uh, Ruang Guru and actually I know these people so that was very exciting as well and then I believe that there were a few other sessions that focus on how could diaspora serve as the uh, ambassadors, you know, to promote tolerance and diversity around the world, you know, mm -hmm. because we had all these diaspora, Indonesian diaspora, about 8 million of us actually, I never knew it was that many, right. that are just scattered around the world. And so, you know, uh, given that there's so many of us out there, we could also act kind of like as, an, as a catalyst, mm -hmm. uh, first to like bridge, you know, uh, our, our new country of residence in Indonesia, but also to be ambassadors, you know, for diversity and for tolerance. And then I think there's another session about uh, how you could make it anywhere. And I think like uh, um, uh, uh, the, the people on that session are uh, kind of like movie stars, you know, so Tanya Gunadi, I believe, who's yeah. like a Hollywood actress. And then there's a, a gentleman named Yoshua Sudarso. He's also an actress, you know, in, ho in, in Hollywood. And then a few other Indonesian uh, actors actresses so they just kind of like try to inspire the young generation and said hey yeah. you know you can make it anywhere like look at us you know we're from Indonesia we work hard we went to Hollywood yeah. you know we made it and Th that's so Frank Sinatra reference by the way J just just to be clear you're right because because <laughs> yeah, because it was actually from the from the New York New York oh, yeah. uh, song which yeah. is if you can make it here you, you can make, make it, it anywhere. anywhere but that was actually the title of the session it is and then uh, the last one I think there's a super mentor ses uh, session mm -hmm. with Angun and with uh, Pasehat Sutarja because these are like the two you know, like there are many successful diaspora, but these two uh, epitomizes kind of like the success, you know, global success that you can achieve. And they kind of like, you know, shared best practices, lessons learned, you know, mm -hmm. throughout their journey. So I thought like in terms of 
just sharing, uh, showcasing, you know, the breadth yeah. and diversity and the achievements of the diaspora and also trying to connect with the young people of Indonesia. It was a very successful event. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Um, also, I in your own words, if you could uh, share your, your, your own perspective uh, being uh, in the Silicon Valley, mm -hmm. uh, how do Indonesians abroad, in the U.S., mm -hmm. to be specific, or uh, based from the CID4, also other parts of the world, how do they uh, cope and contribute both ways to the countries they, re they are residing mm -hmm. uh, in mm -hmm. and to the country that they call home, mm -hmm. to Indonesia? What about the, these dynamics? What, what can you share with us? Sure. And um, I, I, I do want to bring it to your attention that uh -huh. the Indonesian, Indonesian diaspora in the U.S. are very diverse, you oh, know? Yeah. So it ranges from professionals like myself you know, in Silicon Valley to students who are still studying in right. all these universities to, um, you know, also homemakers, you know? There are mothers, you know, who focus on raising their families. Yeah. So I just want to uh, kind of like... Uh, uh, put emphasis that not all diaspora are the same. So everyone is kind of contributing in their own ways. Not all is business focused. Yes, not, 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 all not all are business focused. Some so some are artists, you know, true, uh, be true. it, be it, you know, it's true, you could be a Hollywood artist, but others are also more traditional artists where they kind of play the gamelan and they yeah. showcase kind of Balinese dances at events, you know, New which classes is, also. exactly, which right. is introducing the Indonesian culture to the American society, right? Mm -hmm. So your question as to like, um, how are the Indonesian diaspora in the U.S.? So I would say they're very diverse, you know, ranges from all kinds of professions, you know, from students to professionals, to homemakers, to artists, right? And how are they contributing? I would say they're really contributing in two ways, you okay. know? So in their day-to-day -day life, you know, in the U.S., uh, no matter who they are, like, mm -hmm. so let's just use me as an example. You know, I'm in Silicon Valley. Uh, I'm an executive with a conglomerate company. But I also have an opportunity to actually be able to connect, you know, the Indonesian tech community mm -hmm. here to Silicon Valley. So that would be kind of one contribution that I can bring back to Indonesia, yes. but also uh, to Silicon Valley because a lot of investors in Silicon Valley are looking for new countries to invest in. You know, so they already know about China, yep. they know about India, India, but a lot of these countries are already over, overly saturated right. and they're looking for where is the next kind of next frontier for investments. Mm -hmm. So people like myself and you know other Indonesians like me in Silicon Valley we bring these opportunities, you know, we tell them, hey, do you know that Southeast Asia is a region with 600 million people? Mm -hmm. And actually a lot of our, uh, a lot of the countries in ASEAN, which there are 10, in including Indonesia, of course, and Indonesia is the largest, we have like what a lot of economists call the population dividend, exactly. which means like a lot of our population are actually age 30 and younger. So they're young, they'll be productive, you know, in the next, yeah. in the next decades. and. A lot of these are just kind of like the fundamental uh, factors that will help a country move to the next level. And so from an investor perspective, hey, large population, 600 million. Check. Check. Young population, productive, you know, unlike, yep. unlike some developed countries that have a lot of you know, kind of older population yeah. that the society have to support. You know, a lot, a lot of countries in ASEAN, including Indonesia, don't have that problem. True. And then third, it's still a developing country, which means you can grow at like five to seven percent, you know, uh, mm -hmm. GDP per yeah, year. There's a possibility. Exactly, mm -hmm. compared to you know, like like a developed country like uh, the U.S. or Japan, you know, two three percent, and Europe is stagnant. So a lot of these factors are really qual uh, uh, kind of like they are converging to create kind of like the perfect environment for investors to look, you know, where is the next big frontier for kind of investments mm -hmm. and people like myself and others, we are introducing this possibility to them. Awesome, very mm -hmm. interesting. We need to put a little hold there and we'll continue more with potentials, the next frontiers and technology only on the perspective. <laughs>